On this episode of Motivate's Do It Yourself Garage, we're going to give you an overview of our Bluetooth sensor server, which allows you to make a wired sensor wireless for things like differential oil temperature, fuel pressure, manual transmission temperature, and the big one, engine oil pressure. Let's show you how this works. Here is our mini dash that we have been developing for the past year. And if you haven't seen our other videos, please have a look at episode 42, where we give you a tour of the 16 pages we currently have set up. And it shows you all kinds of data from our Bluetooth server, from OBD, and from the car's CAN bus. When we look on the screen here, these are items, fuel pressure, engine oil pressure, manual transmission oil temperature, and differential oil temperature that are not available from the car's network, from OBD, from anywhere else. However, how do we get the data to the gauges when there's no spot to hook a sensor? What we've come up with is a Bluetooth server that we're calling a Bluetooth sensor server. Now this device here connects to the sensors through these wires. It will power the sensor. It will read the sensor, do the required math to convert the voltages to temperatures and pressures, and then fires it out via Bluetooth. Now, when we first were developing this, we thought, hey, let's do an iPhone app and see how that works. So right here, we've got our iPhone app, and you start the car, the app will connect to it, and you've got those data items, which initially was really nice. But by the third or fourth day, it was kind of... Kind of a pain. You get in your car, mount your phone, put in your pin, start the app, start the car, then it connects, then you got your data, and then your phone needs to be on all the time so you can see your gauges, which can drain the battery. But to get around that, you can simply plug it in, which is just something else to connect. So that's when we decided, you know what? The proper solution and the easiest solution is a dedicated mini dash. And that's what we have here. So we're going to go into depth of four items that we currently have connected on our test mule G37. That poor car, it's been through so much. Anyways, let's get started with the first item. Differential oil temperature. A differential gets quite warm, warmer than you would expect. So we need a very durable temperature sensor and we want it to be automotive grade so it's tough and durable that it can handle the salt and sand and mud and dirt and all that stuff. After trying to figure out the best option to use, here's what we came up with. This is a coolant temperature sensor from a 2008 Nissan Sentra. And the reason we picked the Sentra, it was easy to remove it from a car at the scrapyard. What's nice about the sensor, it's durable, it's tough, it's designed for automotive use so it can take the temperatures. Actually, on an engine, it runs hotter than it does in a differential, so we're good there. And it's well constructed. And of course, when you get it from the scrapyard, you also get the nice weather tight connector that goes on here. And then you've got nothing to worry about. So let's see what it looks like when it's installed in the differential. This item here is our sensor. Right, this is our differential, of course. And this little black item here is a little adapter ring that we created that converts the thread of the differential to the actual coolant temperature sensor. Now, what's really nice about the location of our engine coolant sensor in our differential is the main ring gear is right about here. As we drive forward, the whole ring gear will also turn this direction. And then what that does is it gives it a constant supply of differential oil splashing onto the temperature sensor. And that's good. You don't want to have a temperature sensor stuck off on the side somewhere that may be out of the path of fluid. And then the temperature could be different because you're kind of in an isolated pocket. Now, if you have never done any work on the differential, you can watch your episode 14 where we show you how to change the differential gear oil. Let me show you another picture of a different angle. And here we can see how it is. And again, we've got our engine coolant sensor right in our differential here, this nice big guy. And of course, this comes up and it connects to our Bluetooth sensor server. Now let's do the next one, manual transmission oil temperature. Here is a picture of our transmission and our drain plug is right here. 
If you've never done any work on your transmission, you can have a look at episode 13, where we show you how to change the fluid in the manual transmission. So that way you know how the plugs come out and exactly how everything go back together. So with that out of the way, one of our worries, this part of the transmission here, it's not the lowest part under the car, but it's pretty low. And our worry was if we have some sensor on here, then we got our electrical connector, then we got a wire coming out. If we happen to run over our, uh, a large piece of ice or something on the road, that could cause problems because we would snap off the sensor. So we needed to come up with a different solution here. What we did is this. We took our engine coolant sensor, which we can see right here, and we just modified it a bit. We sort of sliced it off about there, and we did some work to it in order to hook it up. Here's what the final part looks like. And yes, after the picture was taken, we did tape it up very, very well to make sure it is um, weatherproof as much as possible. However, so you can see here now, it's very, it's as low profile as we can get it, and it's no longer hanging down as the lowest part of the car, which is good. It's still a bit lower than I would like, but we don't really have any other options. And of course, this wire here goes up and connects to our Bluetooth sensor server. Now, let's have a look at the next item fuel pressure. Here is a fuel pressure gauge that we installed for episode 36. And if you watch this episode, it will show you how to check your fuel pressure because whether you're checking it or you want to measure it, you're going to need to install a fuel tap. This guy right here. We were able to mount this 100 PSI gauge so we can see what the fuel pressure is at idle. This gauge, <laughs> it's actually from a pool pump. It was not very durable for underneath the hood. What we ended up doing was unscrewing it here, as you can see. It's just a typical 1 8 MPT. And then we installed this. This is one of those inexpensive pressure sensors. It worked great for about five weeks. Then the sensor flatlined and that was it. So what we ended up doing then is we went over and we got a 100 PSI sensor. Now this one is a Honeywell PX3. It was about $80 when we purchased it, which would have been about two years ago. Because we wanted to get the one that was in stock, that's why we have this adapter here. The only one they had in stock was a one quarter MPT, and of course, this fitting right here is a 1 8 MPT. So no problem. We put in the adapter and we've had no issues with it. And now we have fuel pressure for different engine operating conditions. And it's interesting to see how much it changes. And we'll talk about that towards the end. The last thing is, and this is the big one for you VHR guys, engine oil pressure. Here is our engine oil pressure switch on a rear wheel drive G37 or 370. All wheel drive on the G37 is a bit different. We'll show you a picture towards the end. This switch, it's not all that useful to be honest. Basically, if the pressure of your engine oil is less than five PSI, it turns a light on your dash. However, by that point in time, you've already got damage to the engine. So it really doesn't do a lot. And just to sort of help you orientate where we're looking, because I know it's a bit of a zoomed in picture. Of course, you can recognize this as the oil filter. And again, on the rear wheel drive cars, that points towards the passenger side. And this guy right here is the engine oil temperature sensor. And the last thing I want to show you right here is our crank pulley. And we can see our accessory belt here and an idler. And we'll come back to that in a minute. Now, if you've never removed an oil pressure switch, we have an episode for you. Episode 18 shows you how to check oil pressure with a typical garage type gate that has two foot hose on the end. And we show exactly how to do it there because you do need to be careful with this guy here. Any 1 8 MPT fitting, typically you don't need to turn it in more than two, two and a half times after finger tight or you risk cracking this here, and then you need a new upper oil pan. Let's look at what we used. 
Here is our pressure sensor. And again, this is a Honeywell PX3 and the 150 PSI they had in stock with a 1 8 MPT, which is great. We then connected that to an elbow, which is also 1 8 MPT. And then of course we had to put in an adapter to go 1 8 MPT to 1 8 BSP. Now you may be wondering why do we have it on an angle? Nobody else has done that. That doesn't make any sense. Let me explain. Here we can see the gauge is installed right here. Now I was doing an oil change at the time, that's why we have no oil filter and no drain plug. Now if you're wondering why we have so many extra little connectors here, I made a Y cable to tap into the factory oil temperature sensor for some testing I was doing last year and I just simply haven't removed it. This right here, which is hard to see, that little connector, that is the connector that goes onto that 5 PSI oil pressure switch. Let's just zoom in here a bit and give you a different view. So again, there is our oil temperature sensor, and we've got our gauge going out 90 degrees. Why 90 degrees? Here's why. I worry, if I have all of this stacked out straight, what if this belt breaks? What if something gets loose, we get a tear on the end of the belt and it starts to fray. It's going to smack around this and remove it. And that would not be good because now you have a disabled car. If you catch it in time, maybe you haven't blown your engine. I like the idea of having it 90 degrees because then it's actually protected. It's actually tucked in underneath the alternator. Now, if you've done it the other way, it's totally your choice. You get to pick what you want to do because whatever works for you, that's all that matters. It's your car. I just want to show you a different way. Here is a picture I got off the internet, and it really is a bit of a typical setup. People will have a T, and actually this is a really nice T because it's a 1 8 BSP T. They were able to hook in the very silly 5 PSI oil pressure switch, and then they need this adapter to go 1 8 BSP to a 1 8 NPT, which is typically the oil pressure sensor right here. Now, in looking at this picture, if this belt was to break or fray or whatever, you can see it's going to smack it on the end, and then somewhere in here, it's going to break. So you have an option. You can pick what works well for you. Now, again, all of this is for the rear wheel drive folks, the 370Z and the G37. For all-wheel drive, the central location is completely different. You've got an extra add-on there. And right here is where you would tap into for the oil pressure sensor. I'm not sure exactly how much room you have there. I'm sure it's very easy to put in the adapter and maybe a T, and you're good to go there. You're all nicely protected. Now, you may be thinking, um, all those sensors, they're wired. You said it's wireless. It's Bluetooth. Here is our Bluetooth sensor server. And with this server, we initially had it set up to go to an app. But that really didn't work out very well because you got to mount your phone, start the app, and you've already heard me say all this. That's why we decided to focus on to just gauges, a little mini dash that you have that will show you. We've done a recent update. The blue dot indicates it's connected to the Bluetooth server. So you have status, which is nice to know. And the red dot is something new that we've added that's really nice. Well, I like it a lot. The red dot indicates we are saving data directly onto the SD card. Now, the data that we're saving is anything that comes from our Bluetooth server sensor, as well as about 40 some odd items that are on the car's CAN bus. If we start the gauge without an SD card, well, it just becomes a gauge. No error message, and it just goes on. If there's an SD card in inserted and we start up the gauge we get a red dot indicating it's recording to the card you don't have to flick a switch or anything it's if it's in it records when it starts up if it doesn't see an sd card when it starts up it doesn't record it makes it really easy to use how do we see this working well again we're still developing everything we're doing a lot of testing the way we see this working is we're going to mount a Bluetooth sensor server either here or maybe even under here next to the battery. And then we'll have our, you know, our fuel pressure sensor wire come up and go in. 
and then we'll have our fuel pressure come up and go in. And then if you want something from the differential or the manual transmission that will come up from the back and come in here. And then all we need to do to power this is just two wires, one for ground and one for ignition. And if you know the car, on this side here, we got some fuse boxes. It's very, very easy to get ignition and ground. And that's all the wiring. One of the reasons we wanted to design something that was Bluetooth is to use existing gauges that will effectively just plug into this box right here. And then we have to connect two wires and that's all the wiring we have to do. You won't have to spend half of a day removing all of this trim, right? Going inside the car, taking out the glove box, removing all of that stuff to run a wire from the engine bay to the interior. The Bluetooth makes all that go away and it works great. And what you're left with is looking at a gauge on the inside of the car that has all of that data, as well as CAN bus data, as well as OBD data. It's really come together nicely. Now I've been talking about all of these other data items. The data items include, well, we've actually seen these in good detail, all the Bluetooth stuff. And by the way, we can do four more additional inputs on our Bluetooth sensor server. It supports up to eight. On the CAN bus, we have some cool stuff like real-time tire pressures, engine coolant, and engine oil temperature. It's really interesting to see how rapidly the coolant temperature increases and how slowly the engine oil temperature increases. If you have an automatic transmission, you get your automatic transmission fluid temperature. If you have all-wheel drive, we have your all-wheel drive torque. You get to see how much engine torque is at the front wheels and all wheels. It's kind of cool. Also in the car's CAN bus is the engine torque. And that's used typically to help with the all drive module, determine how much engine torque is available, as well as an automatic transmission. For those of you that know the formula for horsepower, if you know engine torque and you know engine RPM, we calculate horsepower. So we have a horsepower and torque gauge. Unfortunately, the way the ECU works, it doesn't reflect modifications. However, it's still kind of neat to see the gauge in action. And of course, we get over 30 other items that you can pick from. And on the OBD side of the house, we can use mode one, which is known as live data. And that's how we get air fuel ratio for bank one and bank two, the mass airflow sensor for bank one and bank two, intake manifold slash boost pressure, throttle position for bank one and bank two, ignition timing for cylinder one, and there's about 40 additional useful pits. Right now, all of this is what is data logged onto the SD card. And if we want anything over here added, it's very easy for us to do that. All right, then let's wrap up this episode. You can now use existing wired sensors without running wires through the firewall with our Bluetooth sensor server and have a compact LCD gauge display. Now we have more work to do. We need to finalize the hardware design. We need to design and print the gauge enclosure. We're going to have two versions, I think, uh, a slim version and the normal version, and we need to test the final version. So we have work to do. We've made a lot of progress. We can get data off the car's CAN bus. We can get data from our Bluetooth server, and we can get data through the OBD port using live data. Anyways, that's all I got for you now. Thanks for watching.